we're going to do some word studies here and understand them from an ancient Hebrew perspective. The word covenant. We're all familiar with that word. We're pretty sure we know what the covenant is. But if you really look at the word covenant, if you, whenever you're working with a word, if you want to understand from an ancient Hebrew perspective, the first thing you have to ask yourself, is it a concrete or an abstract word? Can you see a covenant? Now, you can maybe see the actions of what they're doing, but can you actually see covenant? No, you cannot. Can you hear it, see, taste, or smell it? No, you can't. You can't touch it. You have to ask yourself, what it does the, how did the ancient Hebrews understand this from a concrete perspective? One of the best ways of doing that, and this is what I do in, my, in the lexicon, the ancient Hebrew lexicon of the Bible, is look at its roots and all the words that are related to it to draw, try and determine what that word literally means. The Hebrew word for covenant is barit. In English, and with most modern languages, each word is an entity unto itself. It's just a word that has a meaning, period. We don't work with roots, root words in English, but Hebrew does, because all the words that come from a common root are related in meaning. Now, the word barit comes from the Hebrew root bara. Bara means meat. What does meat got to do with covenant? Well, if, really, if you think about it, what did they always do a covenant with? They always took an animal and cut it, and that was the sacrifice for the covenant. So there's the meat right there. It's actually meat. The Hebrew word barit literally means meat. So when it says make a covenant, okay, well, now we've got to look at the word make. The Hebrew word for make is asa, asa, but that's not the word used when it says make a covenant, the word is karat. Anybody know what karat means? Cut. It means to cut. When it says make a covenant, literally in the Hebrew it says let's cut the meat. That's what it says. Cut the meat. When they did a covenant, what they would do is they would take an animal and cut it into two. And then what they would do is they would pass through the pieces. Now you actually see this with Avraham when he takes the animal, cuts it in two pieces, puts them apart, and then the entity, the smoking fire pot, passes through these pieces. What's he doing here? Why is he doing that? Well, Jeremiah, and I don't have the verse in front of me, but there's a verse in Jeremiah that explains what's going on here when they did these type of covenants. Is What they're doing is they're saying that if I violate this covenant, then you can do to me what we just did to this animal. That's how serious these covenants were. If you broke the covenant, they could literally cut you in two. That was the penalty for breaking the covenant. Now, interestingly, and, I, and I'm not Two House or anything, although I've listened to some of the teachings on Two House, but I do find it interesting that Israel broke the covenant, broke the covenant, and what happened? They got split into two nations, Judah and Israel. Interesting. Just like what the prophet Jeremiah says, that if you break the covenant, then you can do that to me and cut this animal in two. That's exactly what happened to Israel when they broke the covenant. They were split into two.